Thanks, Greg. So we're going to talk about choice of aortic valve replacement in the young. Uh, and um, in some ways, this talk straddles adult surgery. In fact, some people would, would say it is adult um, acquired surgery. Uh, and when I'm saying young, I'm probably talking about the under 50 age group. Uh, but uh, in fact, 95% of them have a bicuspid, uh, congenital bicuspid aortic valve. So it sort of fits in nicely to a, an adult congenital program as well. Uh, I want to talk about um, survival, uh, which is um, um, important, uh, and, and we're, we're now seeing to see, starting to see stark differences in survival between various prostheses, and of course the quality of life, which is all important. Um, you've probably seen this slide before, but there is an abundant choice of um, prostheses for um, surgical valve replacement in this group, including mechanical valve, tissue valve, aortic allograft, uh, and also a ROS procedure. What are the factors governing the choice uh, of prosthesis in this group? Um, well, consideration of the pregnancy option, we've, we've heard about that already, uh, whether or not anticoagulants are, are contraindicated, and uh, uh, as Hermain has said, uh, some of the uh, um, uh, third world countries it may not be um, uh, indicated, or, or is contraindicated in fact. And the durability of various prostheses is obviously important. The surgeon factors, I mean, you don't want to get a surgeon to do an operation that, that he's never done before or not comfortable with. The pathology involved, uh, and um, I would just like to sort of the message out of this talk to me that survival is all important. Uh, so look, the two most commonly performed procedures actually in this country for patients in this age group uh, are the tissue valve, standard tissue valve and, and mechanical valve. And uh, various um, physicians talk about one being superior to the other. In fact, most studies, including this one, show no difference in the survival between tissue or mechanical valve. And the other thing to point to, to note about this is it's not very good. Uh, I mean, if you're under 60 and your 20-year um, uh, survival is only 50%, um, that's, that's not terribly good. In fact, it's way less than the um, general population. Uh, in this particular study, looking at a 20-year comparison of a mechanical valve and a, and a porcine valve, you can actually see that the mechanical valve had a, had a better uh, long-term survival than the tissue valve, which is in the, um, the lighter graph. And both of them not very good. Uh, this is a paper that looked at the prognosis after aortic valve replacement with bioprostheses. There's now a bit of a trend uh, in some of this, this group to put a bioprosthesis in and uh, with view to putting a TAVI in later and maybe then a TAVI in there. But in fact, the life expectancy in someone under 40 is only 17 years in this study after aortic valve replacement. Uh, it's not until you get up to 75 where the um, um, event-free survival uh, is actually um, similar to the overall survival. Whereas in the younger age group, um, it's, it's uh, rare to have a reoperation-free life expectancy. Um, here's, here's the survival uh, with mechanical valve uh, cohort in Denmark compared to the normal population. And, and this is just one of many that shows a big reduction in overall survival. Another one showing the, um, the risk of various late valve related complications after mechanical valves. Uh, out of 15 years, only 23% of patients in this study, which averaged age 54, admittedly a bit older than what we're talking about, but there's, there's no really big studies in the, in the 20 to 50 year group, uh, are really free from all those complications and death. Um, so why do these mechanical and tissue valve um, patient recipients die prematurely? Why don't they have a normal life expectancy? So reoperation is obviously a factor, and there's a risk to that in the, in the tissue valve group, but also some in the mechanical valve group as well. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to prove, but it's probably residual gradients, which uh, means the, the patient's left ventricular hypertrophy or left ventricular dilatation doesn't, doesn't the left ventricle never really gets back to normal. And uh, if you look at the reason why these patients die, it's, it's, it's diastolic heart failure and arrhythmias. And you can see, for instance, the standard stented tissue valve that most surgeons would implant um, it has a way less orifice, smaller orifice area uh, than the, a normal valve. That, that's actually a stentless valve. In fact, the valve area is probably about a half of what, what a normal aortic valve area should be. And uh, we all know this data, which shows that the reoperation free interval for the young patients, the, the bioprostheses don't last very long. And uh, even this is misleading in, um, in that if we, if we look at these patients out at 12 years, that's their freedom from reoperation, but a good deal of the ones underneath the graph are probably dead um, because uh, in, in this paper, uh, sorry, in, in a 
another paper from Edwards which looked at their bioprosthetic um, um, valve survival. In a small print down the bottom was in the, some, if someone's 60 having a tissue valve, they've only got a 37% chance of being alive 10 years later. Um, I've got a bit of a bias so for the ROS operation. Um, for those who don't know, it's replaced with aortic valve with pulmonary autograft, pulmonary valve in other words. It's the only really viable aortic valve substitute and uh, the pulmonary valve is replaced with an allograft. So the advantage is it's got better durability than the other tissue valves. There's no warfarin or coumadin. The exercise hemodynamics, um, the effective orifice area is double what the other prostheses have and I think that's the reason why they they do better. Uh, no thromboembolism obviously. It's a viable aortic valve and pregnancy is possible. And we've had about 30 patients who've, who've had successful pregnancies. There are some disadvantages. It's a two valve operation. Um, it, it was considered at one stage a more risky alternative, although um, if it's an experienced operator, those risks um, make it no more risky than a regular prosthesis. And you have to look at the durability of the aortic and pulmonary valves, and, and there are some late pulmonary valve um, problems that can occur. Um, this is a paper from Tyrone David's group in Canada uh, looking at the uh, comparing Ross versus mechanical valve, and this was really just looking at freedom from valve intervention. And whilst there was a, um, a slight trend to uh, worse results of the ROS, there was no statistical difference in that study of roughly 200 patients in each group. This, is, this was a propensity match study. Uh, this is our results. At uh, 20 years, we have a 96% um, freedom from redo AVR. At the time we published this paper in 2013, it was only out to 15 years, but we now have the 20-year data, and that hasn't changed. Um, it's still about 96%. Um, now, when it comes to survival, um, uh, a lot of people say to us, well, okay, you've got great um, uh, freedom from reoperation, you've got great survival in the Ross group, but really you're just picking the best patients, you're picking the, um, the low-risk ones, and to a certain extent that's true. Um, so um, uh, we're not really comparing apples um, for apple with, with, with oranges or whatever. Um, so in order to address that, just recently, um, um, Ed Barato, Will Shear, a couple of my co-workers, in Melbourne have been looking at uh, our ROS patients and um, comparing them uh, via a propensity match study to other patients from the Australian Cardiac Surgery databases. Uh, you can see these two databases that we've used. Uh, so we looked at the first 392 patients that underwent a ROS. Uh, if we looked at the crude um, difference in survival, we found that uh, after ROS at 20 years it was 95% and after mechanical it was 68%. Now, of course, that's not a valid comparison because many of those mechanical... This was isolated AVR, by the way. Some of those um, mechanical AVR patients would have had diabetes, pulmonary hypertension, um, et cetera. So what we've done is we've uh, managed to find 275 match pairs from um, out of 1,800-odd patients who had the mechanical AVR, and we've compared them um, uh, relative to the various risk factors that might lead to more premature death, such as age, uh, gender, the various time era that they were operated on, uh, hypertension, diabetes, dialysis, uh, MYHA class, ejection fraction, um, and whether or not they had previous infarct or um, aortic stenosis, regurgitation, etc. And what we've found um, now, the uh, mechanical valve patients are doing better than they were when they were completely um, not matched, um, but there's still a significant difference in survival. 94% versus 84% at, um, and that's highly significant. So roughly a three times greater um, late death in the mechanical valve patients. And as I mentioned, all the studies that have looked at mechanical versus tissue really show no difference in survival. So look, in summary, um, uh, if we look at the ROS versus mechanical valve, uh, there's a big advantage of a ROS in that they don't need warfarin. Um, the reoperation rate is similar to mechanical valve, there's no valve ticking noise, and the late survival in the match groups is superior. So in conclusion, in young adults less than 50, um, tissue and mechanical valves lead to a reduced survival compared to general population due to multiple valve-related factors, and the ROS procedure of suitable will give superior survival with very low rate of reintervention and absence of anticoagulants. Thank you.